Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at Spearman's Rank Correlation Coefficient. Here we can look at a graph and this graph is monotonic increasing. That's because all of the data points are going up and they're going in, up in perfect order. Here we have a graph that's increasing but it's not monotonic. That's because data point 4 breaks the pattern. It is not always increasing. Here we have a graph that's decreasing. And it, we call this monotonic decreasing. That's because all of the data is in perfect order. However, here, this breaks the pattern. Data point 2 seems to be out of order between 1 and 3. It is not monotonic, but it is still generally decreasing. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient tells you how monotonic the data is. If the, uh, Spearman's is a perfect value of 1, it is monotonic increasing. If it's about a decimal between 0 and 1, it is, mono it is generally increasing. If it's 0, there is no relation in the data. If it's a negative decimal, it's generally decreasing. And if it's a value of minus 1 exactly, it is monotonic decreasing. Before we continue, you should be familiar with Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient, and I have a video on that that you can watch. I would recommend you watching that before you continue. And we're going to uh, compare um, Pearson's and Spearman's. Pearson's is best for linear data, data that generally fits a linear correlation. Like the graph on the screen, which has a very clear line of best fit that is a line. Or data looks like this. This is a linear correlation. Whereas Spearman's is probably best for nonlinear data, data best uh, fitted to a curve. This is another curve that fits Spearman's. Now, Spearman's is good for nonlinear data. It's also best to avoid outliers, so it's less uh, affected by outliers. And it focuses only on the ranking of the data, the order of the data, not the specific data values themselves. Whereas Pearson's is best for linear data, and it handles original data, not the ranked data. So Pearson's focuses on the original data, not the ranking of the data. This can help you decide whether you want to use Spearman's or Pearson's, and in the exam, you might be asked which one is best for what data. And to give you an explanation of that, you refer to the ideas on the screen right now. Let's look at an example of finding Spearman's. So it says, a teacher wants to investigate whether there is a relationship between students' ranking in their maths test scores and their science test scores. The following table shows the exam scores of the six students. We get to ask we're asked to calculate Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for this data, and we're in, asked to interpret Spearman's in the context of this question. The first thing we're going to do is going to add two more columns to our table. We're going to add the mass test score rank and the science test score rank. Let's rank the mass test scores first, and we're starting with the smallest number, which is 23. That has a rank of 1. That is the first score. Now, the next highest number is 35, and that gets a 2 next to it. It has a rank of 2. The third highest is 51 with a 3. 54 is the fourth highest. 68 is the fifth highest. And 87 is the highest with a rank of 6. We have ranked the mass test scores. The science test scores are going to be ranked now. We've got 32 is the smallest. That has a rank of 1. 42 is the second. And now we have 245s. So what do we do with these? Well, these are ranks 3 and 4, respectively. But we don't call them 3 and 4. We call them halfway between 3 and 4. We call them 3.5. So we give these a rank of 3.5 each. So we have 1, 2, 3.5, 3.5. Then we have 5 and 6. So when you have two data points that are the same value, uh, say they are the third and fourth data point, you say halfway between 3 and 4 is 3.5, and you give them that value. 
We have ranked the mass test score and the sign test score. Now we're going to do find the Pearson's coefficient of this ranked data. So we'll focus only on these two columns and we're going to go to our calculator and find the statistics menu. We're going to input the uh, mass test score and we're going to input the sign test uh, score ranks. Here we're putting in the rank of the data. Once we've done that, we're going to uh, go to graph and we're going to graph the data by clicking F1 twice. And here we have a graph of the data. Once we've seen the graph, we can calculate and we'll go to F2 to choose X. Once we've gone to X, we choose AX plus B and we get this screen here on our calculator. We are only interested in the R value. So from here, we get the R value here of 0 0.8986, and that's the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for this data. What we've done is we've ranked the mass data and we've ranked the science data. From that, we've uh, followed the Pearson's method on the calculator to find a value for R. And that gives us the Spearman's value. So we've ranked it, then we found Pearson's, and that gives us the Spearman's. And if we run this to three simple figures, we get 0 0.899. And 0 0.899 is a very high value. And so I can interpret this saying there is a strong agreement between the rank order of the math score and the science score. When you're referring to Spearman's, it's a good idea to use the word rank order in your test. If we have um, different values of uh, R, we have a guide for that. What, what that might mean on the screen now. You want to pause the video and have a look at that now. That's everything for Spearman's rank correlation coefficient uh, from Advanced Maths. Remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. And also please share the video with your classmates as well so that they can revise with Advanced as well. Check out advancedmaths.com for more IB Maths revision videos. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.